December 22nd, 2017 was a day in infamy for our health center. It is where we joined forces with our colleagues at Middletown Community Health Center and became one organization. We were a year of quiet as we started to integrate our services, learn the best about both of our organizations, and pick the projects that we thought would make the most sense. Much has been promised to the city of Newburgh and its residents. Not much was delivered. Today we change that trajectory. Today we make our promise that we will bring a new infrastructure into the city of Middletown, that we will ex expand our ability to care for those who are either disenfranchised, uninsured, underinsured, or have difficulty in accessing health care. Middletown is a walking community. Middletown is a place where people know each other. And how proud I am to say that we are now part of that community. This could not have happened by itself. And you might be saying, what is it that she's talking about? I'm talking about a $7.5 million infrastructure build that will transform how we deliver health care right here in this community. Had it not been some of the strongest support from the people that are standing behind me, their work was tireless, their energy was great, and they were able to see the vision that we had identified when we started this project. Things couldn't happen unless you have a village that helps us make it happen. And I'm very proud to partner with everyone who's behind me. But I must say, there's one individual who runs our grants department who I need to introduce to you. That's Mr. Chris Lennon. Chris, would you stand up? <laughs> at work. He knows how to put an application together, make it compelling, um, and help follow it up and down so that the, we see the fruits of his labor. Um, he doesn't always get as much credit as he should get for what happens, but we thank you, Chris, and your entire department for everything that you did for us. Um, so, how did this work? Well, we received a $5 million grant from the New York State Department of Health for transitional funding. We're going to change the trajectory and how we do business. But we were short. Five million dollars is a lot of money, but it isn't an awful lot of money when you need to tear down half a building and build 4,000 new square feet and put an elevator and a whole bunch of other things. And so a family who was, who was very well known in the city of Newburgh, uh, Middletown um, and who works tirelessly to ensure that the right thing is done at the right time for the right reason is the Rowley family, and I'd like to take this moment now to introduce uh, Mr. Richard Rowley. Thank you, thank you Linda. Uh, it's great to be here in my hometown, Middletown, um, and uh, the city where my grandfather grew up, my, my father grew up, I grew up, my son grew up, and my two children. Uh, uh, and my wife actually grew up in Circleville, very nearby. Uh, well, I want to introduce my wife, Mary Ann's here today. Stand up and take a bow, Lauren. Um, regarding Linda's comments about her grant, um, she went ahead and included me in her grant to the state, and actually once that grant was announced, um, she called me to tell 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 uh, to share with you know share with us the excitement that she had about receiving the grant, and I said, well, maybe it's time for us now to figure out what we're going to do. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, she did. So I gave her a little shock there, you know. I said maybe we need to finalize our details, but uh, we got together, and obviously, um, uh, th this is a project that uh, we we uh, we feel very very strongly about in many ways, but. Um, Middletown, there's so many memories here and so many thoughts go through my mind as I'm, when, whenever I'm down here. And the last time that Joe and I were together, um, we were talking about how we were going to uh, get Damage Park Pool up and running again. And we managed between the two of us to figure out how we were, we were going to make that happen, and we made that happen. And at that time, also, I challenged Joe to a 5K race. <laughs> you know, classic. He won. And, uh, I can see that nothing has changed since the day. It's a true conversation. <laughs> since the Davish Park pool, but all, um, uh, just just moving along, um, you know, this this grant was 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 huge, and of course, Cornerstone's been the recipient of many grants. Um, 
and it's, it's wonderful, uh, wonderful, wonderful for us and for our community. Uh, it's, it's really, you know, our taxes, tax dollars at work here. This is a great place for some dollars to flow back into Middletown and, and help this tremendous project. Um, and uh, all the officials, I want to thank all the officials and the reps that are here um, today for your support, and especially Joe. He stepped up to the plate. He wrote the letters. He made the phone calls, and we know he's got a direct line to the governor. We know that, so <laughs> I'm sure he utilized that, but, but he really got behind this thing. Uh, and he's had some disappointments in the healthcare area in Middletown, and I think that he was hoping that this, you know, that so we turned it around. We're going to make this happen. Thanks for all your support. We couldn't have done it without you. Um, and Cornerstone, I think you know, uh, Linda said a few words, but uh, they're the, they're the real deal in healthcare in this county. And you know, she went over parts of their mission. And the reason I'm really here is is because of uh, um, many reasons. But carrot, you know, Cornerstone, they they. Uh, specialize in you know comprehensive primary health care they care they they treat people with dignity people that come into their health care are all treated equally they're all treated with, with respect regardless of their ability to pay and uh, you know I think that's that's an important point here that you know when a lot of times when you enter some of these health care centers you know you go through a very comprehensive very tedious process just to get to the point where you're actually going to get some care and many times you don't so they do that, they have, and, and I think the, 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 all the underserved populations, which our foundation is focused on the underserved populations in, in the three-county area. Uh, and again, they, they provide access to health care regardless of race, status, age, sex, sexual orientation, or disability, which is you know, a pretty big statement, but they do it. So, so I think that, that certainly made us confident that, that our money was going to be put to good work and that we're going to serve... Um, you know, a lot of great things in this in this healthcare center. Um, we just completed a, 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 a women and children's healthcare report, uh, which basically uh, studied what are what are the needs of the women and children in the three county area. And healthcare came up over and over again. Um, and Liz, if you just want to hand me that report quick, we have a couple copies here for anyone that's interested <coughs> in it. But. <clears throat> There's so many things, so many, so many uh, challenges that we have, adverse uh, childhood experiences. Um, you know, there's all kinds of things that are related to um, to healthcare. Um, you know that that you know children that can't receive the proper healthcare. What does that impact on them at home? What is their impact on you know situations at home? So they're going to help in Middletown and other areas. Um, really help to improve on those outcomes. So it's, that's very important from my, from my standpoint. I also wanted to recognize before I uh, uh, step aside a couple of great organizations that I support that um, I think are also going to have a big, big part of, of this, um, um, this project, and that is um, SUNY Orange. Chris Young is here. I just want to recognize Chris, have her say hello, Dawn Ansbro from the foundation. And we're, we're going to be supporting this whole project, we hope, with, with some scholarships and other things that we can put together um, for future employees of Cornerstone Healthcare and other things. So we're very excited about that. And I also, want, I also sit on Orange Bank and Trust Board, and Mike Gilfeather is here, the CEO. And uh, we, we, uh, Orange Bank and Trust, I think, is actually going to be recognized by Cornerstone. But um, they've been here to support you throughout, and we're going to need your help help to get this project going as well. So on that note, I'd just like to thank everyone for coming today. I'm very excited. I'm sorry I took a little longer than probably I should have. <laughs> Michael? You're fine. Good. Um, but uh, <laughs> what you're doing, you can take as much time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to uh, saying hello to you all afterwards. Thank you. that not much happens in the city of Middletown if you're not able to communicate appropriately with our mayor. And if you understand our mayor, as long as you're proposing something that will make sense for his constituency, that will strengthen the city of Middletown, he's pretty much going to help you get where you need to be. And we're very proud that our mayor uh, saw what we were attempting to do and put his support behind it. Um, it's my pleasure now to introduce you the mayor of the city of Middletown, Mr. Joseph. To step uh, thank you for the nice words and sometimes when you're in politics uh, you get a blame for a lot of things and you get a lot of credit for some things that really you only had a small part of. 
And this is one of them. That, uh, uh, you know, when Cornerstone um, is a very important part of the eastern part of the county uh, in the delivery of health services, and when our problems came about with Middletown Community Health, uh, we had the opportunity to, uh, we were, there was outreach to us from many organizations that were looking to assume that organization. And uh, I had the opportunity at that time to meet with Linda and staff over at the Newburgh headquarters, and we were quite impressed by not only what they said, but what they have done over the period of years. And looking into their program, uh, family members of mine have really, uh, have gone there, although they don't have to attend, uh, go to a health center. They, they do because of the quality of care. So that's a tribute to your organization and to the quality of people who are working for you and really was an important part of our decision to support the application. The Rowley family, Rich is forgetting, you know, uh, one other time, is uh, not only did he... <laughs> it's not a bad one. It's a good one. <laughs> uh, the YMCA pool uh, was also uh, you were a very uh, benefactor in that project and, um, and getting the new pool built at the YMCA. So your family, you, Marianne, the family, have had a tremendous impact on the city of Middletown, saving the Davidge Park pool, and uh, just on the everyday basis, impacting people's lives. So we want to thank you and you and your family for all you have done for the city. And it's nice to see that someone, um, you know, a lot of people contribute in many ways that they can. And you go, as a family, go above and beyond that, um, especially in your hometown. And people, uh, people recognize it because when you go to an event, um, whether it's the college, the rally center of the college, Davidge Park Pool, you talk to the parents, people remember and, and they, they're thankful for what you have done for this community and the success that you've had. They're proud of your success, but they're even more proud of the fact that you're sharing your success with this community. So we want to thank you on behalf of the 28,000 plus residents of our city, but also the people that are going to be served by this are not just Middletown residents. So it's, going to, it's a regional project. It's going to have significant economic impact, um, both um, in job development, spending of money, the spinoff, um, and of course that's one impact. The other impact is if you view healthcare as I do, and I'm sure as most people in this room do as a right, that you, um, rather than something that the government can withhold from you, that it's an important part of keeping people healthy and um, as part of a, an important part of a community. Because if you ignore the healthcare, uh, the, really uh, the, community, the community fails. So Cornerstone stepped up, the Rowley family stepped up, uh, the building that they're coming into is actually one that I'm very familiar with. Uh, not, uh, it's a former OBGNY building from many, many years ago. Uh, Dr. Rubenstein delivered both of my children at the, <laughs> from that building. And I think Rubenstein, Rubenstein, Feiner, Cartfin, uh, those are just some of the names. Levinson. So, Levinson, yes, Dr. Levinson. And uh, so there's a lot of history to the building uh, for this community. We all remember the fact you had to go down the stairs or up the stairs, you went through the side door. Um, there was no handicap accessibility. There were a lot of problems as the building gets older with, um, with access. And uh, that's all going to change. A seven and a half million dollar investment into this project is significant money. And, uh, but more important is going to be the end result. Health care for anyone who needs it and a beautiful facility in our city the spin-off of economic development. So I'm here to say thank you that we did play this very small role, but Cornerstone, you and your staff, uh, Rich, your family, uh, you made this happen, and from the bottom of our heart, we thank you very much. talked about the long history of that building. I think there's some wallpaper that's still on the floor. That we're going to have to take down uh, and bring that building into the 21st century. Uh, I, you know, again, we don't stand like an island. Um, we like a lot of boats in the water helping or uh, towards us. And, and one of the strongest supporters of our health center is our county executive, uh, Mr. Steve Newhouse, who um, is not with us as he's deployed, but his deputy is here, uh, Mr. Harry Poor. So, Harry. Thank you, Linda. Thank you very much. Uh, I bring greetings from our county executive. He, uh, 
He is in Iraq. He sent me a video the other day of him in a helicopter flying over one of Saddam Hussein's palaces. Uh, he's in a very dangerous place, but he had a little bit of a smile on his face when he was up in that helicopter. But he would be here today if he could, but he's serving our country elsewhere and sent me instead. Um, today is a day about leadership and about generosity. And when I say leadership, I'm talking about these two people right next to me here, Linda and Joe. Um, I'll take Joe first. Joe is the hardest working mayor I've ever seen, and I've seen many. I've seen many mayors, and uh, he cares about the city of Middletown so much. We're on the phone with him every week, every day sometimes, and it depends on if we're dealing with a project or not. But he is a person who sees what's in the best interest of his city, and he goes after it. And 99.9% .9 of the time, he gets it. What's happening today, bringing primary care to those who need it the most in the city of Middletown, despite his downplaying his role, this guy helped make that happen. Leadership again, Linda Muller and I, we go back, I know Joe a long time, I know Linda longer. Matter of fact, we just found out recently that... Older, I think. <laughs> 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 experience, experience. Right. We recently found out that uh, we were both married in 1971, different people. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. But within the same week, within a week of each other, so it's, it's an interesting, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, pairing of, of life experiences beginning even back that far. But uh, Linda, I've known since I was city manager in Newburgh, and she had the health care center on, on the Maple Building in, in Washington Square. And um, uh, to, to see what you've done to bring quality health uh, care to people across this, co this county who need it the most is just, it's an astounding record of success. You should be very, very proud. This is a leader. <laughs> some of our county personnel, like Dave Jolly back there. <laughs> 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 we forgive you. <laughs> the other part of the story today is about generosity, and that brings me to the Rowley family. Uh, the Rowley family, as a matter of fact, my father uh, was in a lumber business and knew the Rowleys and did a lot of business with them. And every time I tell my father I was at an event today with the Rowleys, he says, wonderful family, always have been, continue to be. And your brand is what people say about you when you're not there. They're say, my father says, you guys are wonderful. So I thank you. This would not have been possible without your uh, support. And it's all good things for the people of the city of Middletown, the greater Middletown area. Thank you all. Well, that's kind of all the speaking that's going to happen. Um, but I want to wrap this up uh, by thanking you for being here. I, I want to tell you that Cornerstone Family Healthcare takes the trust that's given to us and we try to always do the right thing at the right time for the right reason. It is who we are. It is the very pulse of our organization. We have a long history of ensuring that all people have access to quality, affordable health care. We have a long history of managing the people's money uh, through grants and through Medicaid and Medicare billings. It is a testament to the board of directors that are here, and I'd ask my board members if you would please stand. Come on. <laughs> they set the vision and they validate the values that drive this health center every day. They are users of the health center. They come and see the same doctors that anyone who comes in would see. They believe that health care is a right and not a privilege. Regardless of what side of the aisle you sit on, it's a concept that if you understand that folks are going to access care one way or the other, whether it's in the most expensive portal or the right portal, that is what we have done for 51 years. For 51 years, folks don't always necessarily get us or understand us. But I can tell you as a mission-driven organization, we put patients before all else. We put the care of our staff before all else because we understand that the connection between our staff, our community, and our patients is paramount. What we do, we do in the most ethical, responsible manner. 
focusing on quality outcomes, focusing on ensuring that every patient is treated with respect and dignity. And now I can say at the Benton Avenue site, our rhetoric and our reality will match because all the great work that happens gets lost in that building. Um, just want to say, I told you there's like kind of like mauve paper on the wall downstairs. <laughs> but L2 Studios, where are you L2 Studios? These are the architects who we have worked with many times who um, came down and did a rendering of what this could look like. I'm not saying it will look like this, but uh, I'd like it to look like this very much. <laughs> uh, the, the whole point is this, is we're going to be adding about 4,000 square feet to the building. We will be making it handicap accessible. We will ensure that as patients come in, they don't get lost in a, in a myriad of floors and suites and sites. We're going to take out a bunch of uh, uh, waiting rooms, because if you build a waiting room, they will wait. And so our goal is not to have that happen. We try to really look at how fast a patient can come in the door, see the doctor, get all the things they need, and get back out. Because I know, like you, you don't, you don't want to spend the whole day, right? Even though we're nice, you don't want to spend the whole day. You have other things to do. This project is the right one. It's just the right one. It's the history of the building. We're very cognizant of where we've come from to know where we can go and understanding how this has affected lives of people who sit right by, stand right behind me. You understand how important this project is. I have two of our physicians here today, Dr. Jobe and um, Dr. Oh, good God, I'm right out of my head. Oh, Lanta. Oh, my God, I'll get shot later. Would you please stand? Um, Dr. Lanza and Dr. Jove uh, had a long tenure with the uh, health center, and they are OBGYNs doing the most fragile work on behalf of our patients, guiding a woman through their pregnancy and ensuring that a healthy delivery is what happens. Because a healthy delivery brings a healthy baby, and a healthy baby is what we want because our future lies with those children. They could be the next Mozart. They could be the next president. They could be the next CEO and president of Cornerstone Family Health Care, you never know. <laughs> so for your service, doctors, we thank you very much, and thank you for being here today representing the entire clinical staff on the eastern end of our county. <laughs> Cornerstone Family Health Care in five counties at 26 sites with 4,700 patients, 560 staff members all doing the same thing at the same time, ensuring that people have access to quality, affordable health care. And at Benton, we will do that. Under one roof will be OBGYN, pediatrics, internal medicine, behavioral health, and substance use disorder services through a primary care setting. The integration of understanding that the health, physical, as well as well-being of a patient is the thing that we must work on because there is a triangular effect treating the whole person, not just part of the person, listening to the person and asking them, that patient, what's important to you, is part of who we are. If you have not come to see us, come. If you're looking for a great doctor, I have an in. Just give me a call. I can get you to the right doctor anytime. Um, to the Rowley family, your leadership in this community is steadfast. The work that you do in Ulster County, Orange County, every place where your footprint lies. You have changed lives, and in this building, your handprints will be there. It will be a testament to you and to what you believe in. <coughs> and your partnering with us is so appreciated, I don't have enough words to say thank you. To the people who helped make this happen, I, I joked with Rich a little bit, you know, the hard part's done. We got the money. Um, now we have to execute, and that is what we'll be working on next. Uh, we're out to bid for architectural design, then we'll go out to bid uh, for the construction project, and then hopefully within a two-year period, if Dave Jolly doesn't shoot me, two years, Dave? Yeah, okay. Uh, me, I like, I like 13, 14 months, but I'll, I'll, I'll listen to the two years. Uh, we will have uh, a, beautiful, a beautiful new building, a beacon here in the city of Newburgh, a tribute. I mean, Middletown. Oh, See, Dr. Lance, it's not the only time I screwed up. I'm human. I make mistakes. I always like to say I'm right about 60% of the time, and I screw it up 40%. Um, that will be a beacon in Middletown, that, that our history 
will again be in resolve for who we are, what we do, and what we believe. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you to my entire staff for being here, to our board of directors, our providers. Together, we are making a difference. Together, we are Cornerstone Family Health Care and could be no prouder of who we are, who we serve, and what we do. Thank you very much.